Welcome to the Peter Sagan Effect. It's stage three of the Giro 2021. And again, Peter Sagan is having a massive effect on the stage. When it comes to Grand Tours, Peter Sagan's form in terms of winning and dominating stages may not be what we're used to seeing in years past, but last year at the Tour de France and at the Giro last year, and again already on stage three at this Giro, Peter Sagan is keeping these stages from being sleepers. Folks, you got to appreciate what Peter Sagan does when you're watching bike racing. Even if he's not winning, even if you believe he's lost some edge out of his legs, even if you believe he might have put some weight on like some of you guys have put in the comments down below, he is still positively affecting the races that we're watching and he's lighting these up. Last year at the Tour de France, he didn't win stages there, but he changed every stage that we watched at the Tour de France except the high mountain stages. So you got to love when Peter Sagan is in the race. Today will be no different. 190 kilometers stage, about 120 miles in length, three categorized climbs, but really four climbs all bunched in near the finish of today's stage. The last climb they'll go over at about 15 kilometers from the finish. Exciting race. When they start right away, they're in the rain. It's messy. It's miserable. As a rider, I hated these conditions. I hated starting in the rain. You were cold already. The body wasn't warmed up. You're putting more clothes on than you're going to need once the race starts if it really goes hard. So when the riders take off, it takes about 10K to get a break of seven up the road and one young kid chasing. 18-year-old Andre Ponomar is chasing, and he has a teammate that's in the break. The teammate is Simone Pelot, and this is important. I was teammates with Simone back in 2017, I believe it was. We did tour of Romania together, and we did tour of Colombia together. He is an amazing teammate. Simone speaks multiple languages, incredibly fluent, and he talks to everybody. There's nobody he doesn't personally know. He probably knows who they're married to and who their mother and father is. This guy never stops talking. He is an amazing character and he's in the break often. And this is why his 18 year old teammate who's trying to bridge across to seven guys is capable of getting across that gap. He's back there chasing for five, 10 kilometers. And finally, you'll see in the front group of seven, it's Simone Pelot and he starts chatting with the other riders. And because he's so fluent, because he knows these guys personally, you know he's up there and he's talking to one of his buddies because everybody in the field is his buddy. So you know the other six breakaway guys are friends of his and he's talking to him and he's saying, hey, Vincenzo, up. Oh, it's a 19, 18-year-old kid back there, man. He's got to go. He just got out of high school. He's got the day off of school. Can we just slow down and let him in? So you know he's asking for some favors. I almost guarantee it. He knows everybody so well. You'll see Simone drop off just the last part and he'll grab Ponomar back there and he'll pull him up to the front of the group. Now there was one scary moment for me when Andre Pomenar got up there because right when he got up he started to take his rain jacket off and when he does we see some trash fall out of his rain jacket. That's what the riders are doing now. They have to keep all their trash and they can't litter on the road so they're stuffing it under their jerseys because they can't get into their pockets with the rain jacket on it's covering the pockets so they're stuffing trash under the jersey and he probably got it between the rain jacket and the jersey so when he goes to take his rain jacket off it opens the jacket and some trash falls out and I'm thinking oh man are these guys going to penalize this kid or DQ him or throw him out of the race or something? You never know. It's the UCI. I was back there like, oh man, what a terrible story. 18 year old kid bridging across and now they're going to DQ him and throw him out of the race. They don't. He stays in there. Thank goodness. It's Italy. They take things a little bit easier over there. Now, the group of eight, they get just over five minutes or under six minutes, about 545, I believe is their biggest time. The whole time I'm sitting on the couch, I'm like, yeah, these, these guys. These poor suckers, they got no chance of making it to the finish. There's no way a break's going to make it. Bora Hansgrohe's back there chasing, and they got their whole team on the front. Only problem is, Bora Hansgrohe doesn't ha have the budget to ride from start to finish. And when they do start riding, they're going to come up short on today's stage. And again, it's Simone Pelot who's really drilling it on the last two climbs near the finish of today's stage. He drills it with 15 kilometers to go, and it's him and Taco van der Horn on the front, and they're riding together. They go over the climb, and they only have about 45-second lead, and they're working well together on the flat when Taco van der Horn attacks Simone Pelot just under 9 kilometers to go. 
in my book, I thought, this is not going to work. Oh my God, he's going solo. Simone Pelot was pulling even. He was pulling 100%. You could see the Swiss rider back there just throwing everything he could have of energy into his legs to work and keep this break away. When Taco Vanderpool jumps him, Simone tries to follow and he just can't do it. His legs are done and he blows. And Taco Van der Horn is on a time trial mission now to go the last eight and a half kilometers to the finish. Problem is he's got one more bump. The upside is Bora Hansgro have messed up again. Now we've seen last year in the 2020 Tour de France where they worked for Peter Sagan multiple times only to mess up tactically at the finish of the race. Here they just budgeted wrong. They have eight guys starting the race and they're just running out of manpower. Now, a lot of times, like in business, sometimes you'll spend your whole savings and hope that you're going to make something back before the next bill is paid. Bora Hansgrohe's thinking, okay, we're going to throw all the chips in. We're going to cash everything in. We're going to save Peter Sagan for the sprint. We're coming up short here because they've been chasing eight guys for a long time. Now they've run out of guys. They're only 45 seconds behind the front two. Now it's just one guy, Taco Vanderpool, going solo. But Bora Hansko is not getting any help back there. It took till under 10K to go before we started seeing some other teams on the front. UAE Team Emirates, they finally start throwing guys on the front there around 5K to go. But it's just not going to be enough because even their guys are blowing at the front. Taco Vanderpool is digging as hard as he can all the way to the line, and he'll win solo at the line. Everybody always asks, why does the breakaway even try to go? You know they're going to get caught, and this is it. You're saying there's a chance. There's always a chance in bike racing. It took some mathematical problems. It took Bora Hansgrohe's Peter Sagan team coming up short on power. It took the other sprinter teams left there in the group, like Israel Startup Nation. They had at least two sprinters still left there with David Davide Chimalai getting second on the stage. But they still had more teammates in there, not really working on the front. You see back there, it's Kofidis. They waited until 800 meters to put their guy on the front. That's just too late in order to give a chance for L.A. Viviani to win the stage. It was just a nightmare tactically. Why it happened is probably understandable. And much probably what I'm thinking about when I'm sitting on the couch. These guys are caught, right? The brake is caught. There's no doubt about it. It's always going to get caught. And honestly, it wasn't until about 15K to go when there's just two riders up there with Simone Polo and Taco Vanderpool that I thought, wow, these guys might actually make it because Bora Hansgrohe is running out of guys. But, but the directors, they can fall asleep back there in the car. Remember, they're driving along at 25, 30 miles an hour at times. Sometimes they're only doing 10 miles an hour in the car and they just start falling asleep. So when Bora Hansgrohe loses guys, those other, sprint, those other directors of sprint teams need to send their guys to the front sooner. They didn't, and that is the equation that Taco Vanderpool needed in order to win. Beautiful win on today's stage three of the Giro for Taco Vanderpool. The Intermarche Warranty Group team gets a fantastic win early in the 2021 Giro. want to point out the finish back there with L.A. Viviani. It's Davide Chimulai. He's coming from the left and he hooks all the way to the fence. He does not cause Ellie Viviani to crash by any means, but he clearly closes the door on Ellie Viviani and moves from right to left. In my book, under the UCI rules, there should possibly be a regulation there and he should be sent back to the group and everyone should move up one spot. I didn't see it when I, when I started shooting the butterfly effect. He was still listed there as getting second. Peter Sagan third on the stage. So Sagan won't get the stage win, but he will gain some points in the sprint competition. Now, with the general classification, there was a little bit of change, huh? Filippo Ghana, he's still race leader here at the Giro. But in third place, Remco Evenpool. Now remember, those two seconds he got yesterday, 
Now he's bumped up. He's third on the general classification. His teammate, Joe Allen Almeida, is just behind him in fourth on general classification, tied for time. So Dakuna Quickstep are in a fabulous spot right now to take the pink jersey in tomorrow's stage if that climb it gets as hard and steep as I think it will and the attacks come really furious all the way to the line. We may see Ghana lose that pink jersey and then we're going to have a question of whether or not if the Yumbo Visma rider Tobias Foss, if he can hold on and get the pink jersey, that would be a remarkable achievement at this year's Giro for the Tour de Avenir winner just two years ago. But Remco Evenpool, we're all waiting to see what he's got. Tune in tomorrow at the Butterfly Effect, and I'll see you guys real soon. Like and subscribe.